Hello, hello, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be basically doing the dinosaur version of Brandon Herrera's cursed gun images. And just like how he's done one dedicated to the realm of 3D printed garbage like the narwhal tusk bayonet, I'll be doing one dedicated to the dinosaur designs of Ark Survival Evolved. Like fellow dinosaur YouTuber Gecko said to me, I'm in for a nightmare with this one. To keep this video relatively short, I'll be going over 5 dinosaurs and I'll save the rest for a possible part 2 if this video does well. The dinosaurs I'll be going over here are Triceratops, Rex, Titanosaur, Raptor and Giganotosaurus. By the way, to anyone who might say that I can't really analyse these dinosaurs in any way because in their respected dossiers they are listed as different species, as an example the Rex being called Tyrannosaurus Dominum, First off, I am aware. Second, I can still in some capacity criticise the designs of the game, since if these were truly a species of a real life genus of dinosaur, they should still have some things in common with said genus and actual species in said genus. And now, on with the video. Uh oh. But the first one I'll be going over is the Titanosaur, or Titanosaurus Vaga Castrum, translating to Wandering Castle Titan Lizard. Sadly, according to Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs, Titanosaurus is what's known as a taxon sack. This basically means it's a genus that everything we're not sure of goes in, like a waste basket. Most of these later turn out to be either new species or synonyms with already established species, though this doesn't mean we can't make some criticisms of Ark's design. For a while this animal was the largest in the game, and it still is up there, being the 7th largest according to the Ark fandom wiki, though just how big is it? Well, according to the Ark Survival Evolved fandom archive, this animal is around 124.5 meters long, while according to one video I found, it's actually about 85.9 meters, and when scaling it up from Argentinosaurus, it's somewhere between 1,540 and 2,969 metric tons. This means that if it was a real animal, it would hold the record for the largest animal to ever exist. As a comparison, the largest estimate for a sauropod was for the dubious genus Bruhakeosaurus, which was originally estimated at 175 to 220 metric tons, though more modern estimates put it at about 85 to 95 metric tons. Getting back to Ark, I already believed the original size of Bruhakeosaurus to be silly, so an animal at least 7 times that is even more ridiculous, and that's when talking about the Ark Titanosaurus being at the lower end of the scale. We could be talking nearly double that by the way. Really, it begs the question of if an animal that size could even function for starters, but I don't know anything about physics and structural engineering and how that applies to dinosaurs. However, when it comes to sauropods, I do know these guys really had to lighten the load in order to reach the sizes they did in real life. For starters, the dinosaur family tree is currently split into two main orders, the Ornithischians and the Sauriscians, with the main difference between them being their hips. Another difference is that Sauriscians had hollow bones which make them lighter, so sauropods already had something ancestral to help them. Another thing ancestral to them was air sacs. Some of you might be thinking of prehistoric planet's Dreadnoughtus design, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the internal air sacs in birds, which help them both lighten the weight of them and help them breathe. Skeletal evidence shows the sauropods had this, and according to Dinosaurs How They Lived and Evolved by Darren Nash and Paul M. Barrett, sauropod expert Matt Weddle found a Diplodocus skeleton with air sacs would have been about 10% lighter than one without them. Finally, their legs were just pillars of flesh designed for the sole purpose of weight bearing. This to me, alongside other adaptations, indicate they were starting to reach the limit of what is physically possible. Although, according to dinosaur facts and figures, the sauropods and other sauropodomorphs, one calculation found the heaviest an animal can get is about 140 metric tons before the legs get too heavy for the muscles to move them. Because you can't throw a brick, it's too heavy. But a can of soup, you can really put some power into that, right? I should also mention the parts of this animal covered in bone growth. It's not just simple keratin structures, the Helena Walker dossier literally calls them bone protrusions. I am aware that sauropods did have osteoderms, which are little bits of bone in the skin, mainly ones from the clade Lifstrotia, according to Dinopedia by Darren Nash, but these osteoderms were small little things, like what's shown on Dinosaur King's Saltosaurus design. 
not whatever the bloody hell this is. The feet are also wrong. As mentioned earlier, the feet of sauropods were just columns of flesh designed to support weight, and one of the things that came around from that was the loss of their toes, with only a few examples having a small thumb claw and that's it. As a positive, as far as I know, Titanosaurus is placed as a Macronarian sauropod, and Macronarians are known for having a sort of head shape like this or similar. I feel like you could change it a little bit here and there, but besides that it's alright, apart from the fact the nostrils are mounted on the top of the head. For those wondering, that's something that was hauled over from the older times when we thought sauropods were aquatic animals before realising they were adapted for the land. Overall, I'd say it's a poor design that goes straight in bottom tier on the tier list for this video, just because the sheer size of the bloody thing. I'm in a bad mood now. I'm upset by this. I feel drained and exhausted. And I'm dumber. I actually I feel that I am dumber than I was at the start. Next up is the Tyrannosaurus Dominum which, according to the dossier about it, is often called Rex, regardless of what the dossier author Helena Walker says to people. I guess that just goes to show how popular and ingrained in the human mind Tyrannosaurus Rex is as an animal. The first problem is its lipless face. Tyrannosaurus most likely had lips, as suggested by the recent paper about it I watched Raptor Chatter cover. I also should note that this is something the Titanosaurus and other dinosaurs should have, and that they wouldn't be like our lips where we can move them around, but instead they'd be immobile bits of flesh covering the teeth like what's seen in lizards. Another one is pronated wrists, which also applies to other carnivores, and will be mentioned again when I talk about the Giganotosaurus and Raptor. Now you remember of how I complained earlier about the bone protrusions on the Titanosaurus? Yeah, well, I'd say the osteoderms on Tyrannosaurus are better, but the problem is that they're on the wrong animal. When comparing it to Saurian's 2018 redesign of their Tyrannosaurus Rex, Ark's design should have no osteoderms. Another one is that the head is far too big and the wrong shape, no matter whether you're talking Ark's original design or its newer design. Also, the babies hardly differ from adults overall. In real life, Tyrannosaurus as an infant would have been very slender and would have slowly grown over time, before hitting a point in time where it would have a massive growth spur and become very large and robust. You can see this in an animation the Saurian developers created linked in the description. Continuing on, Ark's Tyrannosaurus is extremely huge, at around 15 and a quarter meters long, and 7.6 meters tall in the video I mentioned earlier in the Titanosaurus section, meaning it'd probably have trouble moving around if it was real. Ignoring Spinosaurus, the largest theropods are around 12 to 13 meters, and at most about 4 meters tall, so we can safely assume that this is probably the largest theropods could go in terms of length and height. Just to add some positivity, it looks reasonably muscled when compared to Saurian's design, with the only other negative I can think of is the lack of gastralia, or belly ribs, which add much more depth to the chest. Overall, I'd say it's not as bad as the Titanosaurus, since it's relatively muscled and actually belongs to a valid genus, but besides that, it's rubbish and is going in bad tier. Looks like this one's going in my cringe compilation. Up next, we have the Triceratops, or something along the lines of a Triceratops. That's not me poking fun at the design. In the dossier about it, Helena Walker literally says, quote, apparently a crossbreed of the Triceratops and Styracosaurus. However, rather than calling it some made up rubbish like Styracoceratops, they give it the genus name Triceratops and its own species name, Styrax which I believe means spike or spiked. This means its name translates roughly to spiked free horned face. So as you may have guessed, I'm still going to review it as a Triceratops. Anyway, one of the things that kind of makes Triceratops unique among the subfamily of Ceratopsians Triceratops belongs to is its frill. Others, like Chasmosaurus, had these ridiculous frills and ornaments on them. It reminds me of once when my mother said to me that Styracosaurus has spikes on its frill like it's the King Julian of dinosaurs. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Yeah, I like to move it. For one reason or another, Triceratops never had these features, having a small, smooth, and circular frill by comparison, with only young individuals having any sort of spikes on them. Also, the feet shape is incorrect. 
Alongside this, the skin of Triceratops was fairly bumpy, kind of, but also kind of not like what Ark has in-game. According to FossilGuy.com, the belly was covered in scoots, like a crocodile's belly, while the rest of the body was covered in small scales, though there were irregular bumps that I remember Red Raptor writes describing in some of his videos looking like nipples. There's also pores across the body, which some have interpreted as attachment points for quills, like those on Psittacosaurus, but Psittacosaurus is distantly related, so Triceratops probably didn't have quills. Another thing I should note is that the Triceratops also has a charge attack in the game, which is most likely an attack Triceratops wouldn't have done in real life. The reason why is because these guys were huge, and with the whole thing of force times acceleration, these guys could potentially build up the sort of speed that could shatter their skulls. This was even tested on the 2005 documentary series The Truth About Killer Dinosaurs, and the skull broke when moving at a speed of 24 km an hour towards a wall of fake T-Rex flesh. Alongside this, the dinosaur dossier states they are known to live in herds, which is a controversial idea when talking about Triceratops. According to Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs, there has been an unofficial report of four individuals in Wyoming being found together, alongside a report from 1906 about two individuals being found 10 feet apart from each other, but this doesn't indicate those two died simultaneously. And probably the most impressive being one report of 12 Ceratopsians being found near the legendary Hell Creek formation in South Dakota, but besides these, there's nothing really supporting the idea Triceratops was a herding animal, and since most other individuals are found alone, we should most likely assume that it was mainly a solitary animal. Overall, the only positives I can think of for Ark's design is that thank god they didn't give it sprawling legs, and that from what I've read, it's one of the very few dinosaurs that either matches or is very close to the size of its real life counterpart. Besides those, it's another bad tier dinosaur. Here. Yeah, I'm engineering my and now, actual ladies and actual gentlemen, we come to the raptor. In the game, it's called raptor, which is more accurately a term for birds of prey, but in the dossier, it's called Utah Raptor Prime. Since I've already used a lot of Transformers stuff for meme material, you might have guessed where I was going to go with this, but I'm not going to bother. I'm at the point where I want off Wild Card's wild ride. I'm going to go cry. I'm going to go lock myself in the bathroom now and cry. All I have to say is that this is basically the true Hollywood feathered Dromaeus sword you're seeing on screen, ladies and gents. Paleo nerds want to see feathered dinosaurs in films, but rather than hiring people with actual skill like Mark Witten with some of his incredible artwork of Dromaeus swords, producers just have the designers make this thing that looks like the end result of that Chickenosaurus project Jack Horn is working on. In actuality, when basing it on some of Mark Witten's paintings, these animals should have a full coat of downy feathers, a fan of feathers sprouting from the tail, and feathers running all the way down one of the fingers. The Utah Raptor in Ark does kind of have a fan of tail feathers, but it's vertical instead of horizontal and very small, and it also shouldn't have this mohawk. Another thing I forgot to mention, since I'm mainly writing this off the top of my head, is that the fingers of both this animal, the Giganosaurus, and the Tyrannosaurus shouldn't be of equal length. Also, the Utah Raptor has pronated wrists. Overall, their Utah Raptor design is probably the worst offender, ignoring the Titanosaurus. The power vested in this 454 Kasool, I sentence you to non existence. And finally, we arrive at Giganotosaurus the largest, strongest, and most feared carnivorous dinosaur in the game. If I remember correctly, the most upvoted player tip on the Dodo decks for the Giganosaurus was something along the lines of, if you encounter this creature in the wild with a tribe member, just bowl of a tribe member and run. Giganosaurus in the dossier is referred to as Giganontosaurus furiosa. Furiosa is pretty fitting since it's Latin for furious or mad, and its temperament in the dossier is listed simply as angry. Finally, a worthy opponent. This thing is also big, and I mean big. According to one post I found on Reddit, about 45 meters long type of big. That's nearly four times the actual length of the holotype of Giganotosaurus, which is believed to be around 12 or 12 and a half meters. 
As I said in the section on Tyrannosaurus, most theropods typically get to around 12 or 13 meters, with the only exception being Spinosaurus at 14 to 16 meters. Theropods and other dinosaur forms did calculate the Giganosaurus jaw specimen at about 13.2 meters, admittedly, but that's not a very complete specimen, and that's not much of an increase now, is it? If I remember correctly, there is in the video game some lore behind why the Giganontosaurus is so insanely big. According to some comments on the Reddit post, a tribe was getting extremely powerful, so the Overseer, the final boss of the island map, made the Giganontosaurus stupidly powerful to counter and hinder their growth. Though I remember someone pointing out there might not be much lore behind the size, and it might just be laziness on part of the developers. Anyway, the general body shape is correct, basing it on illustrations in theropods and other dinosaur forms, except for the pronated hands with fingers of equal length, the tail and some other stuff like the row of small spikes down its back. Personally, if it was equal in size to the real life Giganontosaurus, apart from maybe the head, this would rank top of the list, but for now I'm chucking it in bottom tier. Anyway, hopefully you liked and subscribed, and I'll see you next time I upload.